as if to emphasise the extremes of this harsh continent, big areas of northeastern New South Wales are uh, inundated by floodwaters that have left many towns and villages isolated, while people desperately wait for substantive rain in the southeast of the country to ease the drought. And as many of you would have seen last week, the red centre is turning green from floodwaters heading to Lake Eyre. Paul Lockyer's filming expedition to Lake Eyre has produced spectacular dividends. And we've had many requests to share more of Paul's experiences, which we're happy to do now. It's not difficult to understand why people are enthralled by this rare outback event. The slow passage of the water to Lake Eyre triggers such a dramatic transformation of the arid outback. Well, it's really hard to believe that it can run so far. Beauty on a massive scale. The harsh desert takes on softer tones and nature works overtime to take advantage of the short opportunity provided by the floodwaters moving their way through an ancient river system. Australian like phenomenon, isn't it? Yeah, yes. It can only happen here. Central Australia is fast becoming a tourist hotspot. We're feeling 100 calls a day almost, you know. Every day I get calls, at night I get calls. People are just waiting for the water to, uh, to drop in the air creek so we can cross into the Simpson Desert. Lake Eyre is a big draw card. Water last flowed in here nine years ago, but the last time it was full was in 1974. It won't make it that far time, but as the water spreads across the vast salt crust, the place takes on a surreal appearance. Out in the middle, it's easy to become disorientated by the blue-on-blue -blue reflections as water meets sky, blurring the horizon. The only definition is provided by big chunks of salt, like icebergs, bobbing in the water. Our journey in the ABC chopper with cameraman Eric Havnan and pilot Gary Tysers took us to some of the most spectacular outback country anybody is likely to see following the big floods in far north Queensland. It's taken months for that water to work its way down here to Lake Eyre and along the way it's rejuvenated deserts and floodplains. The chopper roamed far and wide on a filming expedition that stretched from Inaminka in the South Australian outback to far west Queensland and south across Lake Eyre. Fuel dumps had to be arranged well in advance in a number of remote locations, including cattle stations on the edge of Lake Eyre. I suppose, you know, people would think of this as just arid, brown, desolate sort of country, and yet you look around and look at this dramatic transformation. It's all green with water flowing everywhere. Yeah, well, that's why I'm pleased you're here, because uh, most people won't see this. They won't understand it. They'll look on a map and there'll be a little you know, blue line that says Air Creek or Diamantina River, and they'll have heard of the desert, and, and so that'll be you'd, be, you'd be dreaming. But uh, you come out here and you stand and you still think you're dreaming, but uh, uh, you know, it's exciting. David Brooke and others who've chosen to make their lives in this challenging environment bank on getting a flood once a decade. But they often have to wait much longer than that. We've got to count our blessings and we have had blessings this time. And, uh, but we have had the crook times as well, so uh, we'll enjoy it and we'll try and make the most of it uh, because that's what we do. And that's the aim of the sport, is to keep the traditions alive that Australia is so proud of. Roping and wrestling cattle in the sport of bronco branding has its perils, but it's something 83-year-old Charlie Raymond grew up with. He's worked on outback cattle stations all his life, 
apart from the time he served in the Navy in the Second World War. He's seen a flood or two, but many more droughts. It gives them hope for another 12 months anyhow, at least. And the cattle hold their condition out here. It is an amazing country. And even the bird life, ducks and pelicans and what have you, that I don't know where they come from, but they all get here the moment the water's here. You'll go through the dry years and never see a water hen, and suddenly you get a shower of rain, and where they migrate from is beyond me. I've yet uh, to work that out myself. Uh, I'm sure my ancestors would have had an answer in, in some of their you know, mythical stories, but uh, I've never seen so many uh, these whistling ducks in one heap. Don Rowland's ancestors made their home in the desert country around Birdsville. But as well as he knows the area, he's still astounded by how quickly it responds to water. Yeah, it's just amazing because uh, you live here and you watch the water holes dry up and the creeks dry up and you think, well, all the fish are gone too, but not at all. In arid areas untouched by the flood, the camels run wild across the dunes. But where the Air Creek has spread its banks through the Simpson Desert, the water runs in big streams between the dunes, dry on the peaks, wet and lush in the hollows. The wildflowers have already started to appear. And if they get winter rain in this outback area through the Simpson Desert and beyond, the flowers will come out in vast numbers. It will be one of the most magnificent scenes in the outback for years and years. Birdsville, on the edge of the Simpson Desert in far west Queensland, is preparing for the influx. The famous pub intends to make the most of the business, positioned across the road from the airstrip. What could be more convenient? You could land, walk, open the gate, walk across the road for about 20 metres and in the door of the pub, you know. You're going to fix your thirst pretty quick, I think. But, mate, there's a long time between drinks. And I, I can tell you, mate, they be, they're at the gate and they're ready for, to rush because once, once the gate opens, they, they'll be here like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> 